city needs underpasses, city needs flyovers, but uh, mindless projects, this is what you are talking about, I think it's perfectly okay. And, um, yes. and, and I think the Richmond Road flyover is a classic no. example, classic example where you've actually created a problem by and in the process spent public money. No problem has been solved there. I was going down that road this morning and I found that uh, there was traffic piled up on the two slip roads on the side and the flyover was completely empty. Good example of that project. Absolutely. I can, I can add another which is the K.R. Puram uh, bridge which is a very very classic Cable case. Bridging. Absolutely, absolutely. It is one of the, uh, the, the least used and if you see the uh, traffic uh, on on the on the road, road surface sites. level, mm -hmm. that's that's invariably piled up. You go at about half past nine, ten in the morning. It's it's absolutely congested and crowded. So evidently, not enough homework has been done in that zone too. Okay, we can name many. It's, we just named, I think, a couple of examples between us, but there there will be many such. Uh, Radha Krishna, you are proactive citizens of Kormagla. You also fought against a piece of land near a lake or something. I think it became a big issue, and you won won that. Uh, War. I, I call it war. Can you just explain that? Yeah, there was um, eighteen. There's an eighteen-acre property. This empty uh, piece of land. Uh, about um, twelve acres was a water body, and another six acres adjoining that. Um, the citizens went to court in the early two thousand because it was felt that this piece of land, and especially the water body, which had dried up over the years, was going to be used uh, uh, and built over. And it was a long, hard fight. We won in the High Court. Uh, the uh, parties appear, appealed in the Supreme Court and the, uh, against the BDA. BDA hadn't represented in the Supreme Court for over eight months. And again, accidentally, we stumbled upon the news that in two weeks, if a BDA lawyer wasn't going to represent BDA, an ex parte order was going to be passed in the Supreme Court. And again, thanks to Nama Bangalore Foundation, Rajiv Chandrasekhar's help, we moved heaven and earth, got BDA to appoint a senior counsel in Supreme Court and Supreme Court ruled that that was to be developed as a water body. Uh, and then started the fund really because BDA then came out with a, uh, a DPR and it said that the project was going to cost seven crores. We have a group of residents again who are very involved with water body development. So that group then got together, analyzed the DPR found lots and lots of deficiencies in the DPR and ensured through the uh, good offices of people like Dr. U.V. Singh that the whole DPR was reworked and we now have a DPR that costs a little less than three crores with a final product that is much, much better than what was initially uh, envisaged by the BDA. So that I think is a huge example of how active uh, citizens can influence uh, decisions by the government for the betterment of the society. Absolutely. I think that's a great thing. That's a great victory for you people. Nitin, uh, one of your RWAs, I think, uh, there are several RWAs in each doing uh, much better work than the other. So one of your RWAs also launched something called WO, W, uh, o -W Creating Wealth Out of Waste. I hope I'm Absolutely. Right. How has it been working? What is the success rate? Actually, the success rate is pretty good. Uh, I can speak about it from good experience because uh, it's very active in the block uh, in which I live in Koramangla, third block. Uh, we have a success rate of somewhere about uh, 75 to 78 percent right now. And uh, that's pretty impressive. Uh, the way we have done it is we've gone door-to-door uh, -to -door and educated people. Uh, the first focus has been on segregating the wet waste from the dry waste. The dry waste is picked up by uh, an NGO called Sahas, which, uh, which uh, uh, recycles it at a facility in Ejipura. Uh, we are now moving into some more proactive approaches in wet waste too. Like for instance, in wet waste uh, also, we are trying to get people to do composting at home, uh, composting at home uh, uh, solutions. Uh, we think this, we have only touched the tip of the iceberg, though a lot of people have said that you've done great work. I think lots more has to be done. But uh, our, uh, I think Kormangla is one of the leaders in that initiative so far. I, 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 you want to yeah. Can I just, um, yes, a lot has to be done, but let me give you the example of my house. Till about a year ago, we used to hand over a big bag of waste to the BBMP three-wheeler van every morning. Now, thanks to these uh, brilliant guys who have come out with this recycling, all the dry waste is given to them every Saturday. They've also organized composting in our houses. 
So all the wet waste gets uh, composted in, in my back garden. And that van doesn't stop in my front of my house anymore because there's no need to. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. I wish other areas follow your example. Absolutely. Do they ever approach you and say that? Oh, oh plenty. Exactly you go about? No, no, plenty. In fact, uh, sub several of the uh, elected representatives uh, in our area have told us, and elected representatives from other areas in Bangalore, other corporators and uh, councillors in other areas, wards in Bangalore, would like to come and see this uh, initiative. We hope they can uh, you know, pick up some uh, tips from us and implement in their areas too. Nitin? Because you stayed there and I'm asking you this yeah. question. I believe you have turned rack pickers to waste segregation contractors. And yeah. uh, it's a great job. I'm, I'm appreciating that. Because poor rack pickers, you're, you're calling them now waste segregation contractors. Yes, uh, see, uh, yeah, one of the things that we are uh, trying to do, uh, yes, that's why we brought them into this picture was among the wet waste that is being picked up uh, still by the, uh, by the BBMP in, in houses that still don't do their own composting, we can get a much better value out of that waste if we segregate the wet and dry waste. Suppose the, uh, we get a 100% wet waste product, it yields a better price in the market and uh, it's of higher value to the BBMP and to everyone. Otherwise, mixed waste has no value. It is just buried in a, you know, in a landfill. So this is a thing which we thought we could kill two birds with a stone, achieve an objective and get them employed as well. Fantastic job, guys. And the, the way we generate the money for their employment is the what Sahas gives us. We pass on to these people. So they so earn also. They earn also, yes. That's good. From yeah. that, picking to doing something concrete. That's yeah. Uh, Dr. Radhakrishnan, quite some time ago, you also fought against a cricket camp in a park. <laughs> it ate up your lung space. Has the park been restored to you or is still the fight going on? No. Um, well, that again, um, that was our first success story actually in uh, third block Koromangla. Um, as you said, there was a large uh, public ground served by one individual who was running a cricket camp for his own personal uh, benefit. And uh, citizens individually had been fighting this person for over 10 years with no success. And that's what triggered off the Koromangla uh, third block RWA. And uh, we got a huge amount of support both from uh, Mr. Rajiv Chandrasekhar and from Mr. Ramalinga Reddy, our uh, uh, MLA, who helped us immensely. And we finally got rid of this person and we've split that ground 50-50. One half of it is a beautiful park. I think you must come there, Mr. Mm. Balram, on your way out. Sure, um, we have hundreds of people walking there every day. Oh. We have a library situated within the park that all the residents use. And the other half is a playground now being developed with various amenities. So that was a huge success story and it says how when you unite, that's when you get success.